Hello, welcome to Chapter by Chapter, The Wheel of Time. My name is Steve Haynes. You hear that? And across from me. Hear that? I hear it. That's a horse galloping. I hear that, that clitter clatter, that clip clop of that horse. That's because we are on an empty road. I'm Will Cowan. And uh, yeah, we're we're chapter by chapter, and uh, yeah, we're we're talking about the first chapter here of uh, Eye of the World of the Wheel of Time series. Um, Want to just get into it, Steve? We're getting into it. Let's- this is our official first chapter episode. Uh, if you've missed the prologue episode, check that out. Even though it's not probably not necessary to to keep going forward from here, but let's get into this book. I mean, all these episodes are like eight to ten minutes anyways if you got ten minutes and most of us speed our podcast through anyways we always go like 1.25 speed or one and a half speed so it'll take seconds i don't i don't do that you don't do I that hate when people do that i take my time <laughs> i do that i'm like get me through get me through man all right yeah we're into chapter one of the empty road so this chapter we're kind of uh we're kind of thrown into a different world altogether from what the prologue was. The pro- the prologue was very dark and sad, mystical, mystical and kind of sad and really like a bombastic and confusing at the same time. Like it, it a lot of things were thrown at you in, in the prologue. And uh, this first chapter, this, this is a little more grounded. This first chapter, yeah. This first chapter just he it, it takes. It takes a w- big step back from that. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, basically, <laughs> this chapter is about two guys transporting some apple brandy. Yeah, some apple brandy, some cider. To a party. Uh, to a party that's going to be uh, in a town called Emmett's Field. So the two characters that we're talking about are Rand Thor and his father, Tam Thor. And something I've taken, taken away from this uh, chapter is Robert Jordan's kind of ability to describe characters in a way and oh he's yeah he's kind of great at it he's a master you know like i i have no question of what tam looks like in my head oh like soup like almost too descriptive sometimes yeah yeah and i I was watching like uh some youtube videos of people kind of kind of analyzing the the series itself and it's pretty much the same thing like everybody's like he's very descriptive with all the characters that are brought to the brought into the fray and these first two characters are your first glimpses of that uh that descriptive one of my favorite lines in this chapter is when he's kind of explaining um tam and how he's just this like solid dude and that he can stand in a a coarse river i think it was the term and like he wouldn't be Mm -hmm. he wouldn't be stopped by that i kind of love that phrase that that just like okay he's a solid he's a solid dude He's a solid man. Yeah, ain't no, ain't no river taking him down. He's like a, like a dam. He's a walking dam. <laughs> He's a walking dam. <laughs> yeah, and these guys, so uh, father and son duo, and they work on a farm, and they're transporting uh, goods to uh, a town called Emmons Field. And on the way there, I think this is kind of like one of the most important parts of the chapter. Uh, Rand, who, uh, I. I've read ahead a little bit and I'm going to, I'm going to spoil it. I'm going to spoil it. I think no, you can't, I think he's the main character. I'm going to go ahead and say well, it. That's not a, that's not a spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> if you think, I think he's the main character. Anyway, it's likely, uh, as they're going by, they, uh, Rand sees this hooded character who, he uh, sees like, yeah, like a cloaked figure. A cloaked but fig- before before he sees the cloaked figure, he feels the cloaked figure. Yeah, yeah, it's something about the wind, right? Yeah, well, there's the whole thing of how it's colder than it should be. Yeah, um, that it's spring and it should be warm, but it's still cold. And then he feels like he's being watched. Yeah, um, shortly before he actually sees a cloaked figure, and he also feels that he feels hate. He feels hatred. Yeah, from the cloaked figure. Yeah, yeah. He's totally like, right. this guy hates me. <laughs> and I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did to piss this guy off. Now, this, this, like, for any, like, not, for any, like, relatively experienced fantasy enjoymenter, I, what's the word I'm looking, <laughs> looking for here? Fantasy enjoymenter? Is that what you just said? Yeah, I, I just said fantasy enjoymenter. I think I'm looking for, like, fantasy enthusiast. For any Ooh, sort of fantasy. Oh, wow. <laughs> enthusiast oh, wow. out 
for all fan no we're sticking with fan- <laughs> fantasy enjoymenters <laughs> okay <laughs> if you're a fantasy enjoymenter out there um when they start talking about the hooded character i immediately started thought thinking of ring rate ring rates and this whole chapter kind of has a sort of a lord of the rings feel i know it's probably kind of a cop out i mean if you swapped a couple names really like think about it <laughs> think about it like as these characters are kind of going into emmons field emmons field ha- kind of has that shire feel to it and i went looking i went looking around on the internet to see if anybody thought the same and a few people have said that robert jordan's kind of goal at the very beginning of this book was to evoke uh an idea of lord of the rings or to kind of like take that that style of writing or that kind of like setting you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and uh just bring it forth to a writer and i think it's or to the reader and i think it's kind of to to kind of get your bearings of of what you're reading you know what i mean it's kind of ease in that reader to this crazy world because they're if it's anything what the prologue, if this series is anything what the prologue says, this is going to be deep. There's going to be a lot of phrases going around. Even in this chapter, there's some phrases that you're Oh, like, you, mean, you mean book one of the 14 book series? Oh, yeah. It's going to be deep? I actually looked it up. You know how we thought is it was- 15? It, there's 15? Uh, there's 14 regular books. So there's just the main series. And then there's a prequel book. That's not that like it's cut. You take it or leave it. It's a prequel book to the to the whole series. So there's 15. Gotcha. It's it's massive. Okay. So yeah, I get this kind of feel to uh, of the Shire kind of being evoked from uh, Emmons Field, and you know how he's kind of like explaining the thatched roofs and everything like that. Um, mm-hmm. We're also more or less uh, kind of introduced to to the world. So like. There's certain terms like they refer to Nynaeve, like there's a character in, called Nynaeve in Emmons Field that's the wisdom, who is kind of like a witch character, I'm guessing. It's kind of like a, a, a leadership like a, role. Like a, yeah, I guess. Yeah, kind of, kind of like a leadership role sort of thing, but you don't know what a wisdom is, you know? Um, but you're just, getting, you're just getting bombarded with different characters. As soon as Rand and Tam enter- I took it as like a seer or something, or like a... I don't know. I know what you mean. I I, I think like I'm a mystical person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, but as they're coming into town, you're just getting bombarded with different characters, and like each of them are as detailed as the next. So it's like it's filling out those pages quite quickly. Um, what do you think about the names here? Like we're we're getting we're getting a whole bunch of characters right in the beginning here. So what do you think of the names? Okay, the names. I don't. I mean, these names are just Rand and Tam and Lamb and, and I, I, listen. I don't know. There's Matrim and there's a it, lot. It, it, there's a there, these la- these names. I kind of um. There's I, they don't feel like solid names to me. You know what I mean? Like they they're just kind of like words picked from the air. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah a lot of them don't feel like names but maybe that'll change as it goes on and i get you yeah i mean like I you, it, yeah because it's such a deep series like you kind of have to roll with it when i was reading do and i was kind of thinking the same thing like what are these names like why 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 these names how, yeah. what like how'd you come up with this stuff is it just like nonsense or do, is there a basis on it and i'm gonna go out on a limb here and that say that these names are kind of more or less based in nonsense although they like make sense they sound like names anything can be a name kinda... but it's just there's anything. not a lot of names we know like yeah i think i think there's a matt that yeah there's matt somewhere in there but it only has one t um you know yeah Tam, days like it's weird weird names but that's cool yeah. i like a weird name yeah why not we've we've seen weirder names and we'll probably see even weirder names in this in this series as we go forward um anyways they come into town they uh they uh land right in front of the wine spring in uh to drop off the uh the apple cider or uh, apple brandy um and that's where we're introduced to uh, a couple more characters brandlin alvier who is the mayor and the wine spring inn owner and i kind of imagine him as like just like a big bald you know uh 
<laughs> I yeah. kind of want to say Dexter Jetster kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and big, then we're uh, yeah, just big dude, big four armed alien. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, it works. Obi Wan. Anyways, uh, we're also m- introduced to uh, Rand's good friend Matrim, who we already talked about just a little bit. That's uh, Matt, and he's right. That's Matt. Yeah. So yeah, really, Matt yeah. There you go. Take. That's the one real name we got so so far. And it's yeah, actually yeah. Matrim. So make of that what you will. <laughs> and uh, he t- and Rand tells Matrim about the uh, Black Rider that he saw in the forest. And Matrim's like, oh, I actually saw the same guy like a couple days ago. And uh, they start talking more and more. And that's kind of where the, the chapter ends. Tam just like he sees them together. And they're like, boys, grab that cider. Put it in the put it in the inn. Put it get in that the inn. cider ready to go. I I don't know if yeah. we mentioned that the cider is for Beltine, Beltine. Yeah, Beltine, Beltine, yeah. Beltine, which is like um, it's like a spring festival. Yeah, it's like a little spring. It's festival. the festival of spring. Everyone gets drunk yeah. off apple brandy. And he's kind of like explaining the uh the event as they're coming into the uh into the town like Robert Jordan is he's explaining what the event is because they're I think he refers to the pole that the girls dance around and so it's, it's kind of about it's like a festival about marriage but not really but it yeah it is um but yeah it, it's basically this is this this chapter is really deep into kind of world building setting up the setting up the setting of the area yeah and off of that there's um there's also a part when they're so when they're walking like right after or during the whole Black Rider thing, Tam mentions the flame and the void to Rand, um, something that he's taught him, and says, concentrate on one flame and uh, until his mind becomes empty and focus on the void. Interesting. And I, I mean, remember reading that. We don't know what that is. We don't even know. I don't know what that is. I don't know what Tam's knowledge of the flame and void is. Maybe um, it's like just uh, like an old timey or like a, a way to kind of focus your mind. It's like, it's, it's this world's way of like, just calm down, focus on one thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Could be. Or like the, it's like i I'm one with the force. The force is with me. Sort of. <laughs> it could be that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, this chapter is kind of like setting up, setting up the world a little bit. Um, and we're, we're meeting a whole bunch of characters and I'm kind of enjoying this town, this Emmons field town. Um, but we're going to cool have town. to see where, what's that? It's a cool town. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool town. Uh, yeah, but we're going to have to see where the story goes next in chapter two, which will be tomorrow. We're going to get into it tomorrow. Right, Steve? We're going to get into chapter two tomorrow by chapter one. one by chapter. <laughs> by, by chapter one by chapter two. Yep. Okay. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Bye. 